going to be That's what's going to really give me. I think it'd be great with him. We do all the security uh, in Blackpool. We cover most of the outlets and venues in Blackpool. Every establishment we do, we're we always checking, we're always visiting. There's always somebody at my door in the corner, all the time. If there is a problem around the town, we can sort out the problem. Well, in the AG, we supervise the all the time and find out uh, how many caps are in the building. Then we take it from there, how we continue to support that venue. You're okay. Just have a word with Billy, yeah? And that's obviously in the food plane. Tell them what the problem is, then we will follow up with the cats. All the in trouble there. I've been working on doors in Blackpool for several years, 20 odd years. And the vacancy became open, and Steve contacted me, the owner of the company, asked me if I'd be interested in applying for the job. How are we doing? All right, David, you got a minute? My job entails coordinating the pub and the club. Oh, you got in time being here. Oh, you the lads that they employ, they're all trained mostly by the police. You know, it's not a, a, a business these days that's based on hooligans and, and bankers. People come to Blackpool for fun. Gangs of lads want to chat for gangs of girls, they want to dance, they want to get drunk, have a they want to basically have a good time without annoying other people. You'll always get the odd one, which is why we've got our job, you get the odd one that maybe doesn't want to do that, but in general, people come to Blackpool for a good time. John? Everything going all right, man? Is the money in? Uh, well, we're trying to keep all these lads out, you know, we are here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll let you do your job then. Oh, I'll see you a bit later. All right, Steve. Okay. Any small rope um, usually can be sorted by the doorman on the spot, or he will call one of us in the backup car, and we'll go around, take a, you know, you take two extra doormen with you in the car. They see that there's, there's extra staff there. 90% of the people then back down. Generally, if you see there's two or three doormen, most people leave. Once they get out in the street, they might shout and ball a bit and wag a finger. But once they're out in the street, it doesn't really matter. They'll wander off to the next pub or wherever they're going back to the pub. We moved away from using bow ties, dark prints, all that type of thing, because people tend to equate that to an aggressive image. You're not sure of him is what you've got to get away from, that's not how I go it to him. So you can see all the image, can't you? He's bad, isn't it? You know, the crombies on the bloody door are difficult, it just looks bad, doesn't it? I'm saying here, I'm still straight that. On a Saturday night, I go round, or Stuart goes round, we collect the sign sheets off the lab, we collect the master sheets, which have to be signed by the landlord, and we generally finish up, we collect the last time sheet at Oz, because Oz is the latest opening, and that has the most staff on it. Oz is a particularly difficult place to work, because it's so busy, and it's so big. It's not difficult from, from violence or fighting point of view, it's a case of manning it and having the right staff, and Oz is not the type of place where any woman can work if you've got no experience. You need to know your job, and that's because it's just a very, very busy place. Upstairs in the play area, we uh, have two dormen and myself, the district manager here at Oz. Inside is the club, on each exit we have a dormen, and also we have someone patrolling around the club. This weekend should be very important for us. It's the busiest bank holiday the Blackpool experience. This is the only club in Blackpool with two separate rooms. The front room is more dance and party. The back room uh, is generally very local orientated. Any problems that we actually have in the club are handled quickly and swiftly with a minimum four. Be dissolved by talking to the customers. The customers have to be ejected by the nearest exit. We have a backup service available run by Steve so it's one phone call away. It's a minibus full of lads who will come down, who are all registered, who will assist in the problem. If it's bigger than that's in control, then obviously we have to call the police. Generally, a, uh, a word in the ear does the job. Uh, when you're approached by a man like Slim, uh, the first thing that, that, that most customers say is, well, sorry mate. Problem sorted. The license laws come out, it's got the line. 
people are just watch the fights and go on the doors. And uh, it's easier to get people out of a club now or a pub. If you're nice to them, it's just to grab them and just go straight through the door. You've got to take them out reasonably. If there's a big fight and someone attacks you, you like fighting the shop for a punch you, you've got to punch back. If that happens, you are going to get pulled by the law and questioned by the law. Yeah, mate. Whoa. Before I started working for Steve, yeah, I, used, I worked on a Calypso, which is at the Pledge of Inch. I got it with a metal bar over here, I got quite a few stitches like, but that's, that's the name of the job. I was, I was back on the job two weeks later after I was out. If I'd have gone back, I'd never have gone back. It's like riding a bike when you fall off it, you've got to get back on it. Excuse me, Friday, we had, had a really good night in a club, and when they got out of the club, it's just like a boxing ring, it's they're all animals, they're all silly. And the license the law states a doorman cannot do anything outside the club. If we could, we would. Well, the doorman's manager, John O'Neill, but I, I think a good working team like on ours shouldn't need to be told what to do, where to go. We should all know our own place and most of us, we do. I became a doorman eight years ago and I left the army and uh, started the doors in Edinburgh. Moved to Glasgow and then to I was basically competing to leave the army. Like myself, I was in the infantry and over the qualified to do anything else apart from security or door work. The door work's better paid. So, I choose the door work instead. If you combine your team, we'll put you in the door. Don't laugh at me. The likes of an individual don't sweep them. You would shake them, tell them not to sweep again. If I was to sweep again, you wake them, tell them it's his last warning. If I was to sweep again, then you get cut the doorman. If you can't walk, carry him. And put them through the door. I rejected one guy for uh, trying to close a fight, so we took him to the bottom of the stairs, he was being aggressive in the hut. Uh, the doorman, Jim, on the head, just kind of grazed him. So we gave chase, but the guy was fast on his heels. Had we caught him that night, we'd have brought him back. Caught him jailed, he would have been charged. We didn't. Did you just find that John then? No. Really Who did they? Right, don't, don't put back. Did they give a pass out? What? The guy on the door. The guy on the door. The guy that I've been on this door has seen what here, me and another door security woman. That's it. Somebody go there, do you? Oh, I'm going to go to the house and sit down. 
with little Dave Sassel. Got it. So they'll go back out and come back in again. They can. Just two guys arguing. And the guy just struck him with a bottle. The police came, but uh, it was only the guy's word against the other guy. So at least I just wasted my time trying to probably get a conviction on it. I think inside any idiot, there's just a leap of property on it. I mean, they're just going to snap. They're just looking for trouble. You need a way to front bar, please. Come on in. Hey, get us with you there, the front door! <laughs> hey, get us with you there, the front door, please! Fourteen hundred people come in this club. Maybe ten may want to fight. The rest just want a good night. And that's the way we like it. As long as we end up ending the night, all the doors still yeah. intact. You're happy. Five. Well, when you've had a right busy, busy <laughs> Friday or Saturday night, you enter the club as fast as possible. You have your stuff pint. When you then we'll have a wee talk, chat about anything, maybe what's happened during the night. Go back to the flat about four o'clock, have a, a beer, unwind, go to your bed. Come up the next day, take your new stuff from the wardrobe, put it back on, and you go and do a day's work again. But then you've got a few hours in if you want the money. Yeah. I mean, we're only here for the money, we're not here for the enjoyment. It's just a continuous continues well right through the season and it can be a long season <laughs> town outside London has got the biggest licensing area of, of, of any town. 33% of licensed premises in Lancashire are in Blackpool Borough. The fact that we've got 86 late night licenses and uh, 197 licensed premises suggests that it's a bit of a fun town. And because it's a fun town, we police it accordingly. Therefore, there's got to be some allowance of how we deal with drunken people because they're happy, merry drunken people having their holiday, uh, enjoying themselves. But obviously as a town, and because of the license in trade, we've got to keep uh, a grip of it. But in 1989-90, we did some research into um, the door staff and violence on licensed premises. And of 92 people that arrested that had door staff connections, we found out that 72 of them had uh, serious convictions, convictions that uh, concerned us. So what we decided to do is um, we considered producing a door staff scheme which would regulate door supervisors and would allow us to vet the type of people that were standing on the doors. Before the scheme was started there was a lot of concern from members of the public stating that door staff were using too much force and uh, this was identified in numerous letters as I said to the chief superintendent and uh, we quote these letters to the door staff during the training package that we've put together. The scheme comprises of um, a registration and four sessions of training for the door staff. The aims of the course are to make door staff more professional and um, train the man into the correct ways of dealing with people. You are not bouncers, you are professional door supervisors. The word bouncer is something that is in history as far as we're concerned. That's something you definitely are not. Moving on from that, our St. John's ambulance man came along and he talked to you about how to resuscitate and how to stop bleeding. There's only one problem. 
I wish I hadn't put an ambulance. Let's say there's a fight tomorrow night at your place, and we'll have a bottle or a knife involved, it doesn't matter which, but somebody gets a real nasty cut from halfway up the arm there, a real gash there, and there's blood coming out, and it's spurting out, you know, out of an arse, cut artery. Up in the air, and direct pressure onto it. Get them to press their hands on it. We've just been talking about HIV, haven't we? Well, the video depicts door staff that were acting out of order. That is the way door staff shouldn't behave. We present that to the door staff to show them what they shouldn't do and train them to do the right thing. It's amazing how many people can be led out by the arm and we get the phone call of being assaulted by the doorman and we go and that's what they tell us. If you do ask somebody to leave, make sure you give them the opportunity to leave. Ask them to leave. Yeah. Don't just go up and grab them if they're sitting there doing nothing. You must give them the opportunity to say, I would like you to leave the premises. If then they're not going to leave the premises, you can take, take whatever it means it takes, but using the force is necessary. We talk about the fact that it is being done in other parts of the country and that the Home Office are looking into uh, national schemes for door registration and the doormen now accept that, yes, they are in a trade that will be regulated come what may. Never leave your post without permission. We put all that one in because of the situation where we have um, movement of door staff if there's a problem in other premises. I know with Steve Hill, the way we view it, is that if you've got a group of rowdy lads in your premises and you think you might need more door staffing, that's when you get your extra door staff. If you use for that, make sure you're covered that when you do change premises, you're going to be booked on. Yeah? Say we've signed an uh, Oz, for example, yeah. and there's a kick-off at the venue. Now, if we leave to sort this trouble off at the venue, would we have to sign up the venue even though we're not working there? I would say yes, yeah. You're not actually a mobile door staff team like the police force are a mobile police force. I mean, if the, the doormen of the town start to become a mobile unit going from venue to venue, then that presents us with another problem, doesn't it? If you're on the door and you're asked to go somewhere yeah. by your boss, you've got to go. <coughs> you. Who's your boss? Well, this is it. Ah, it's that. Your boss is the manager or the licensee of those premises, not who you might think it is. The boss yeah. is paying your wages. Yeah. You get a check every week, every Friday. Yeah, hang on. Right. Off Steve Hill at his office on Church Street. Still. Then we go to bank and cross it straight away. Is it Trev? Eddington's. I got the job because they wanted a woman to raise, so they asked Chris, and that's how I got the job. My mum and dad thought mine, but her mum doesn't like her doing it. It's a risky, risky job. We I can't even get insurance because it's too high. Because we're at a high risk job, it's too much money to pay. I met him on the door, I couldn't stand him. And then I was talking to him all day in his family arms, and uh, I got to like him and just asked him if he wanted to come back to my place all me back to his. He'd been said he wanted to change my name, that's how he put it. He didn't get down on one knee at anything, he just said I want to change your name. I took it as a marriage proposal. So we do need to see each other. <laughs> and Sue's in like another 10 years, still on that bloody door, unless we do something about it quick. I would go and look for another job. It's him. He wants to stop on the door because he bloody likes it. I want to travel the world now. This summer when we had these, these new t-shirt competitions, she wanted me to do security for her. And travelling, you know, basically all over the world with them. But I think I'd find it hard not working with him. Oh, we have an ID, girl. Oh, that first one. Got an ID, love? Yeah. Hello, Diane. 19, you know. Date of birth, Thursday, 8th of September. I want ID off all of you since you're all skippers on the pier. Okay? Since you've got ID, you can't come in. Come in every week. They don't. I week. work on the pier, mate, and I know them from there. Don't judge them, Stan. Oh, no, it's not working on pier, don't they? Oh, is he? Yeah, because he's doing top up here now. All right. Have you heard about what's going on tonight? No. Uh, uh, to see the wolves, Pam? Yeah, no, I've got to see the wolves. So, what have to stop them, basically? Group collapse. Yeah. It's no group collapse, I'm afraid, tonight.